Before discussing the nature of art and science as independent, let us highlight the fact that they are fundamentally harmonious human endeavours. According to Harper, art and science bear intrinsic similarities in their attempts to illustrate aspects of the human condition. Grounded in exploration, revelation, and representation, art and science work toward advancing human understanding. One can indeed apply many or all of the principles of research, those explored earlier, to artistic practice. As such, Schwartz believes that the centre of our efforts concerning research at universities of art should not focus on the competition between research and teaching, on the apparent disagreement between theory and practice, or on the differences among research cultures, but on a creative and critical willingness to cooperate. Nevertheless, analysing tropes, even clichés, of science and art may highlight key points for such creative and critical discussion on the way to a functional synthesis or third hybrid new, which strengthens all. In this vein, let us consider the following set of tropes laid out by Eisner. A simplistic understanding of science contains an emphasis on controlled environments, objective and distant observation, tightly held systematic approaches, a scientific language which is literal rather than figurative, where the manner in which factual data presented is interchangeable, resulting in a standardization of form, one which does not confound the content. It aims for the production of ideas that will enable us to anticipate the future, if not control it, and make true statements. This implies singularity and monopoly of outcome, and is validated critically on the basis of its reproducibility. As a contrast, a simplistic understanding of art contains an emphasis on personal expression, abstract gestures and freedom of intuition. A specific artistic language which places a premium on the idiosyncratic use of form, not the creation of a code, but the creation of an evocative form whose meaning is embodied in the shape of what is expressed. Here, a standardization of form is counterproductive, since form and content interact. It does not aim to control or produce formal predictive statements, and is principally interested in the creation of meaning, which implies relativism and diversity if not plurality and downright anarchism, and is approved by critical reactions to the persuasiveness of its personal vision. In reality, work in the arts and sciences is not so clear-cut. But for me, examining these tropes highlights the fact that the epistemic validity of artistic research rests with its ability to differentiate itself from its parent disciplines, whilst also synthesizing them. That is to say, the kind of knowledge it produces must be unique and neither of the objective rational explicit sort nor the subjective intuitive and sensoric aesthetic sort, but rather a third new sort which bears an intergenerational resemblance to them whilst ultimately remaining singular in nature. Shisa supports this claim seeking to neither adopt notions uncritically or unconsciously from the sciences and the arts, nor positing artistic research as absolutely and completely different from these fields. Instead, he sees the potential for a differential connectivity, where one makes the actual specifics known in a more discriminating way, and at the same time remains self-confident and open to connection.